Hi, I'm Bill. I'm Patrick. I'm Simon. Hi. All right. Hello. And before we get uh, on with uh, Simon, uh, I just want to make mention that we're uh, encouraging people, our viewers, to get engaged with a future chat. Uh, it's really painless. You just need headphones, microphone, some kind of camera on either laptop or desktop, and uh, you know, share your experiences maybe and helpful tips on uh, what you know now that you didn't know maybe when you're a beginner, those type of conversations. Feel free to show any of your images. Um, and I'll put an email address in the video description where you can reach out to us if you'd like to schedule something. And uh, also our uh, next guest, uh, which will be for episode four, will be uh, Andy Weeks. He's located on the uh, East Coast of the United States, and he'll be joining the chat at that time. So uh, don't hesitate and volunteer and get involved. It could be a lot of fun, and it really helps when it comes to sharing information. So, uh, all right, we're going to let Simon uh, kind of do his introduction, and then Patrick and I will be asking questions, I'm sure. So take it away, Simon. Hello, right, guys. Thanks for the invite. So uh, I, I get invited on to uh, quite a few segments, so I was more than happy to help. Um, so uh, as you can tell by my accent, I'm actually a Brit, although I'm actually located here in the South Island of New Zealand. So I've been out here since about 2008. And uh, I work in telecommunications, but uh, like you guys, my hobby is, uh, is astrophotography. And um, while I've been down here, I also got involved with uh, quite a few of the uh, sort of national activities. So I'm also the vice president of the Canterbury Astronomical Society. We're uh, one of the oldest astronomical societies in New Zealand. Uh, we have an observatory just a few kilometers uh, away from uh, my home here. Um, so I'm located just outside uh, the city of Christchurch. It's, it's not a very big city on the grand scheme of, you know, world uh, world population. We've only got about 300,000 uh, people that live in the city. Uh, and I'm about, uh, about 40 minutes out of the city. But even though I'm relatively close to the city, I'm already in a Bortle 2-3, so it's pretty dark here. Um, so uh, we, we have a nice uh, nice sky. And um, we, we do quite a lot of activities at the, uh, the observatory. We have uh, open nights uh, every Friday evening during the winter, do private groups. Uh, plus, we've got a lot of uh, training activities as well for our junior members. We have a juniors section called the castronauts and uh, we get them involved we also have um, uh, meetings at the university um, during the uh, during the month as well so a lot of activities uh, going on there uh, and when i'm not involved in a lot of that stuff i'm also heavily involved with uh, with zwo and um, most people uh, if you're an astrophotographer know the name so I work um, with the product development teams and the product support teams. I'm also a support engineer for them uh, in my spare time as well. So you'll find me hanging around Facebook a lot on the ZWO pages, trying to help people with issues, problems, and uh, guide them around ZWO products. But if you also reach out to ZWO and uh, to the support line, and uh, then the chances are that uh, you'll uh, you'll bump into me on there. I also work with the product teams as well. So um, Sam Wen, who owns ZWO, he's been out to New Zealand a couple of years ago, and that's literally where we created the concept for the uh, for the ASI Air Pro. We sat for uh, two two days at a star party with. Uh, some paper and a pen and sort of drafted out what kind of things that astronomers would want out of, uh, of that product. And then he went back away to China to, to see what they could create. So, um, yeah, so I get, get into doing the hobby myself where, when the skies allow. So the great thing about me as a support technician is 
I, I'm an active astro imager, so you know I'm not a I'm not an engineer inside ZWO that doesn't do uh, astrophotography. Uh, you know, uh, I use ZWO products because I like them. I love the team, and um, you know, enjoy supporting users with them. So, um, yeah, so it's full on, and of course, I I do my own stuff as well on on YouTube uh, along with uh, with Tyler. Uh, uh, Tyler Bowman. Um, many people also know Tyler. He's a uh, customer service manager at Explore Scientific. So also an active imager. And, you know, you'll find me hanging around a lot of these uh, forums and websites trying to help people out. So, <laughs> so, um, so you're, you're doing a YouTube channel then? Is that? Yeah. The... So, oh. so, uh, so uh, Tyler and I, uh, uh, you know, kicking off our, um, our own work. We have a site called Astro Works, which, uh, you know, we're focusing on training videos and trying to help people with imaging problems, but very much focused on uh, beginners because okay. I, I, I feel one of the, one of the things that we forget in this hobby is that um, we very quickly become, you know, experts in our own little field, but we seem to leave the uh, beginners behind and um one of the things that i struck me really uh you know deeply with the asi air is that um it's a fantastic product you know it it makes makes life so much easier for an astro imager um you know that you can get all of the tools and you know connectivity in one little box but the, the downside is this it, it it's opened up astro imaging to a lot of people that actually don't know anything much about astronomy so we need to um we need to make sure that those people are not left behind because they get really frustrated um and you know let's not you know underestimate that you know um astrophotography is a it is a complex mix of science technology it and you know a lot of people struggle with technology so um you yeah, know i want to pick up on a point on the uh, astrophotography club um i started kind of on my own and i kind of stayed away from clubs and then i wound up joining two and for me as a beginner it was uh very helpful because now i'm around more experienced imagers as well as visual astronomers, because I, I tell this story, I kind of feel like I, I'm cheating because I didn't know the night sky before I got into astrophotography. But through the club, I'm able to get that exposure of the night sky and learn about the night sky and look through like 25 inch Dobsonians and, you know, just see some amazing things with my eyes, the live photons. So um, it's clear, I think, in what you're saying that there's a benefit to participating in a club if there's one in your area that you can participate uh in is that uh yeah i mean one of the questions we get asked at the observatory all the time when, when we are and we we put literally thousands of visitors uh through the observatory every season one of the questions they always get asked is or oh, what telescope should i buy and the answer i give them is none don't buy a telescope buy a membership to the society or your, you know, and, and um, become a member, spend some time using our equipment and um, learning from others. Eventually you'll get to a point where you go, actually either I don't need a telescope because I I've got what I need here, or I now am armed with the information that I need to actually go out and buy the right thing we get lots and lots of people turn up asking for help who have bought, you know, cheap, um, you know, Newtonians on equatorial mounts off these, um, sales pages. You know, we have them, you know, um, here in New Zealand, we have a site called trade me and, you know, they go and buy these, um, you know, wobbly tripods, long focal length Newtonians on equatorial mounts. And they have, Hey, it's on an equatorial mount. They have no idea what it means, but um, then they get very frustrated. And, you know, we get donated these a lot of times to the society because people you know, leave them in the garage because they just don't know how to use them. So 
I mean, one of the advice that we also say is if you really want something, go buy a pair of binoculars. And, you know, um, you know, for here, we, um, you know, we we suggest go, you know, buy the book, turn left at Orion and get a pair of binos and just use those. But, um, yeah, for astrophotography, one of the key things that I see is, you know, and certainly on the ZWO support line is that we get a lot of people calling in needing very, very basic help. Uh, and one of the, th you know, and don't know how to progress. They get very frustrated. And one of my advice is I can't teach you astrophotography over an email. Go, f go find a local society, go spend some time with some astro images and, um, and then you'll, th then you'll pick it up. Yeah. And you're right. Absolutely. It's go join a club go join the society and um i'm the same as you i didn't i didn't actually know um you know i can't i can't navigate my way around every single star but learning astrophotography i've you know certainly in the southern hemisphere here i was a northern hemisphere guy so you know i i had to you know, relearn the night <laughs> sky completely because it's a whole new ball game down here we don't have polaris we don't know you know <laughs> We don't have the, some of the key constellations, so it was a new learning experience for me again. Yeah, I think one of the things that kind of held me back initially is uh, I'm naturally introverted. And um, once I joined, I joined the Riverside Astronomical Society down in the uh, south of uh, California. Uh, the people were so welcoming. I mean, it was just right away I said, okay, I'm very, I'm very comfortable. And... I don't really need to talk a lot because I'm here to learn. So they'll do the talking. I'll do the learning. And that just kind of, just kind of worked out. But, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I promote wherever I can. If there's an opportunity, uh, get engaged, uh, with a club and, uh, meet some new people. And, and it's a, the one-to-one -one conversations I think are the best way for the exchange of information. Forums are great. I love the YouTube channels, but sometimes that face-to-face -face conversation, at least in the way that I learn, it, it is just the, the most effective. Um, I wanted to go on to the uh, ASI Air Plus because I just bought one and started using one, and I've ordered a second one, actually, and uh, I'm a Nina user before that, and um, I still don't see the cons yet in, in getting one. So, you know, there are some plug-in things that I like in uh, Nina, uh, but I'm not missing them by using the ASI Air Plus. I think there's a little bit around framing and uh, maybe creating a mosaic, but I can do the create the mosaic and like telescopus and then import easily into a plan of the coordinates, and, and it works just fine. Um, do you have any visibility in some of the, I know there was a, or is a beta going on. Do you have any insight into what might be coming out of that? Or is it too early to, to share any of that? So I always get asked this and it's an interesting, it's an interesting topic because I would say that there is a large number of development items that the team are constantly working on that don't you know they'll get they may go into a beta and then get removed so um you know either because they're not working in the way that we thought they would or um they're not quite you know developed yet and um, they're not ready for the public release uh, the one thing i will say uh, okay look so uh, the the niche that the the, the ASI ser series is in. I mean, the mini is just out now as well, and you know that's another development of of the platform. Um, that they won't fit everybody's need. Um, I mean, the tagline of the company, you know, of ZWO's ASI Air Range is easy as one, two, three. And while I'm not quite in line with you know astrophotography being easy as one two three um it, it, it does make things easier you know um i i think for um i, I use the asi air a, a ton um and i use it at the observatory because we can set it up and i can give 
um, my tablet PC to a 10 year old and go and say, go drive around the sky. Um, here's how to get to a target. Press this button to take a picture and see what you can find. And they absolutely love it because for them using a tablet is second nature. You know, it, it, it's so easy. They just fall into it. And, um, and for me, that, that is something, you know, they, they're amazed at what the camera can see that they, you know, that they, they can't, they go, well, how can I, I can't see that. Why, why does the, te- <laughs> why does the telescope see that? And then there's a conversation, you know, Hey, you're looking at, you know, you're looking at the tarantula nebula and it's hydrogen and it's, you know, oxygen and you can't see your eye. Yeah. There's a whole conversation behind it, but, um, but in terms of that platform, you, you're you're really right, Bill. Because what um, you know, what Nina and SG, I, I use Nina uh, SGP. P- people use Nina, and I still use those in my observatory because they can do things in a different in a different way. But the ASI Air series is a is a niche for a, a different kind of environment. You know, people are always saying, oh, I want observatory control, you know, and I want, you know, I want this and I want that. And you're like, well, that's not really what the ASI Air was designed to do. The ASI Air was designed for you to stick it on a telescope, drag it out into a paddock, you know, sit with uh, sit with your laptop and image the night sky. But I think the side effect of that is that people have started to get into automated imaging and then they start to, you know, to want more out of it. The thing that I love about ZWO and the, you know, the ASI air is that, um, they get a, they get a lot of criticism sometimes. And I think it's unfair criticism. Um, the amount of updates and development work that is going into that platform is insane. Um, so, and people, it makes me laugh sometimes because people say, why can't you program that? It's a five minute job. <laughs> and, and I can tell you, I'm a, I, I've worked in it for many, many years as a, even as a software development team manager, there is no such thing as a five minute job. It doesn't, doesn't exist. Yeah. And, um, the great thing about the ASI pl- air platform that, the team listen very, very carefully and very intently to what is being talked about on the forums. You might not think it. ZWO is watching all of the major forums um, all the time internally from either their marketing team or the development team, you know, or people like me going, you should, you should look at this as a feature. And and they do really do, but it, it's like any resource. There is a limited amount of resource that you know you can um, apply to a feature. Um, so the top features, you know, the biggest return wins. You know, because yeah, you know, yeah, you're not going to build. You're not going to spend a week building uh, a feature that's like for one percent, where you could build a feature right. for two weeks and. 90% of the users would like it. But I, th- I think for me, the ASI Air is, the, the, the platform is great because it, you know, if you're a deep sky imager, you can use it, you can automate it. If you're a random sky browser or at a star party, you can live stack and, and use it. If you just want to browse for sky and take a whole bunch of sky, you know, five minute snapshots, you can do it. If you want to use it on the moon or planets, you can use it, I, you know, and it's, it's so cheap, you know, yeah. You know, oh. if I want to, if I want to set up SGP or Nina, you know, I've got to go and find a PC or a laptop or a nook or something, or, you know, even a, even a stick PC to put it on. So I it cost you as much. You know? I happen to do a video <laughs> on, um, I was comparing, my Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box Advance and my Nuke, my uh, B Link U59, 680 bucks hmm. versus 299. Yeah. You know, and it is simpler uh, to ensure proper operation and everything. So, yeah, no, the, the, the value, 
So I know sometimes the uh, air gets uh, platform gets criticized because it's you know closed to ZWO products, but I think that's where the value is because I think I learned through my Apple experience when you got the vendor controlling all the layers and you don't have to worry about all these third party drivers and all that. I, I think you get a cleaner and a, and a, and a more optimized uh, product. At least uh, that's my view. It's um, it's a lot more supportable from a support perspective. You know, um, when people are messaging me looking for help, you know, I'm I'm not getting bombarded by the large you know large number of possible connections and devices in use. Um, the interesting thing about uh, astrophotography, it, it is not a hugely controlled world in terms of interconnectivity. We have ASCOM, you know, we have platforms like Indigo, etc. you know. But apart from that communications protocols, there is no standards really, you know, in terms of, connectivity and hardware and the way it behaves it's not a, it's not a microsoft you know it's not an apple world or a microsoft world it's it's the wild wild west yeah. um you know so it's 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 hard to support all of you know i see what the you know i spend some time wandering around the support forums for sgp and the, the challenge with them is you know tenfold of what we struggle with at zwo um the ASI air is, I mean, it's closed to, um, you know, focuses and filter wheels for one, but, um, the, the numbers of mounts that are supported is, yes, is yeah. insane. And, of course, and DSLRs you know, as well. Yeah. And mirrorless and DSLR cameras yeah. to an extent. And that's another question I get asked a lot. <laughs> why, why is this, you know, when's this camera coming? Why is that camera not coming? You know, a lot of that depends on the software development kits that are released by the vendors. And some of these vendors don't like to make um, their SDKs that open. So it makes it quite hard to integrate into uh, into ASI Air. But uh, look, I mean, the, the great thing about this platform is that if you buy into it today, nobody's charging you for updates nobody's charging you for mm -hmm. rentals you buy the unit and you could keep using it you know i mean i'm still using i still test my v1 you know i still use the original plastic case you know um asi air because i test on this but i've got you know i've got a couple of pros i've got a couple of pluses and you know now i've got the Little ASI Air Mini, if I, can. if I remember where I put it. Hold on. <laughs> oh, uh. You picked it right out of the night sky. Yeah. 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 So, you know, here's the here's a, here's a little mini. So it is really, really tiny. And yeah. um, oh, again, wow. you know, there'll be some. There'll be some discussion about this because there are some things that are different about this, but it's. It's not aimed at someone that has uh, um, a plus, you know, or, or, or experience. Um, you know, the, the idea of these is these are more aimed at uh, new entries. You know, it, it's still powerful. Most of the uh, most of the features of the ASI Air platform um, you can use on this. It, it's not quite as powerful, so you can't use um, live stacking on the full frame cameras, for example. You can't live stack mm. with the 6200. And it's a little bit slower on read write. Everything else is pretty much there. The power ports aren't um, controlled anymore, they don't have um, um, the ability to turn these on and off, for example, or control the um, DC going through them. Um, there's um there's no cop you know there's no um flashcard slot on this as well and it's only usb2 ports not usb threes it's now a proprietary board to zwo 
partially to get it, you know, I think that is to get around the logistical problems of um, getting hold of Raspberry, you know, compute boards right now. But this thing is cheaper, lighter, smaller. You could use that. Yeah, this is great for a camera tracker. It, it, it's so light. It really is so light. So, yeah. but the great thing is if you buy this today, in two years' time, you'll still be getting the, the, the software updates. I'm still using the, the Pro and the Plus and still getting updates for them on a regular basis. So, you know, uh, I don't buy a subscription to it. It's, you know, it's open uh, in terms of um, I can just update it when I want to. And that's, that's a great thing. So it's got a huge amount to offer. And... Um, as you say, Bill, it's easy. You know, you can. Yeah. I can use a tablet. I can use a phone. And at the well, observatory the other night, I had my phone in my pocket, and yeah, you know, that, just use that. that. <laughs> that's an excellent point, and I think that was an obstacle to me moving to the uh, ASI Air. A lot of people were encouraging me on the channel because they saw me with some struggles, and so. Um, that using a tablet or a phone to manage it was, I, I guess, a little bit off-putting to me initially because I'm a laptop guy. I'm a desktop guy. I didn't really use, you know, I'm 68 years old. I didn't really use a tablet a lot, you know. Um, but then when I started to see, uh, it's fantastic using the tablet. And uh, the power consumption compared to my laptop and me as a traveler taking all my kit to the field wherever I can save on power is a big plus. So that's another value out of the ASI Air platform for me is using my uh, tablet. And if that should fail, I've got my phone. I mean, it's, it's brilliant in many regards. You know, I, I think I said in one of my videos, the ASI Air platform is ridiculous. I mean, it, you know, for $2.99, uh, but, uh, you know, I'm still going to invest some time in Nina. I've had some troubles with my nuke and those kind of things and all the different layers of drivers and ASCOM and all that. I'll get that sorted out. But um, it impressed me enough to purchase a second one that I'm going to run with my Edge HD uh, 8. Um, but, yeah, the, the whole moving to a tablet has just been fantastic. I just prop it up at night when I'm getting a few Zs because everything's running well. And if I glance over at it it's there using very little power and i i just love that uh i love that aspect of the uh the experience and, it, and it's certainly an entry into the uh, you know into the hobby for um for younger um astronomers you know so at the opposite end of the scale i give a tablet to the you know to the kids at the observatory they just fall straight into it because they're so yeah. used to it. So, yeah, it's it, it's a struggle for, uh, you know, for someone who's not hugely um, happy or, or, or understanding of the uh, of a tablet or, a, you know, but most people have used phones. Most people are able to, you know, it's just a different scale. Most of the things, you know, if I go to my Android phone, the way it works is, you know, pretty similar to my tablet so it's a, it's an easy step up but yeah and i've actually mm. been able to connect to uh my nuke with my uh, phone using uh android uh, chrome remote desktop i think so if I, I really had to but you know this whole time that people are encouraging me to get the asi air i happened to go to the golden state star party up in uh, aden california that and i walked around and I was impressed by how many people had the ASI Air platform. So naturally, I'm telling myself, "What am I, what am I missing here? You know, what do all these people know that I don't know? You know, both yeah. the viewers that are encouraging me and actual. There was 250 um, astronomers, a mix of astro and uh, and uh, visual, but the number of uh, ASI Air I saw was pretty." pretty significant and impressive so that kind of like pushed me over and said okay um, I got to do it and I bought my second scope and I needed to backfill uh, to be able to manage that mount and that scope and it, it would just turned out to be a perfect experience so I'm mm. very happy I about think that. I think for me uh, you know I've, I've really enjoyed using the ASA Air and I use it seriously I'm you know I'm you know, I use this stuff because you know I, I enjoy using it too but 
you know, the combination now with the AM5, um, it, mm. it's just so seamless. It's fabulous. Um, I started using the AM5 during testing. Uh, TJ Connolly and I had the first two mounts uh, outside of China, um, and we got we both got early early pre-production models and as soon as i linked this up to the asi air i was I, I i messaged sam and i said this is a winner this is this is a combination made in heaven because i don't use a i don't use a hand controller on it i connect up the asi air i can drive the am5 through the asi air and then you know i go back into the observatory and i pick up the hand controller for my cm60 and go oh, i hate this thing <laughs> where the hell is this i gotta find this menu um and you know i can sit i i have station mode set up so i'm sitting in the lounge in the winter in front of the fire and you know i'm doing testing whatever and it's like i, I just I just love this. It's so it's so much fun. It's so easy to use, and yeah. look, um, oh. there'll be a ton of new features. There, there's always new stuff coming. It's a developing platform. Um, there's always a rough edges, you know, as we're bringing new things in. We try, we test so much. I can tell you now, we spend literally thousands of hours before you get it in the production release in the Apple and Play stores we have spent literally thousands of hours of testing. We there's thousands of hours testing before you even get it in the beta. Um, you know, so um, we're hammering it, you know, night after night when we can. And uh, there'll be a ton, ton more stuff coming guaranteed. And uh, Simon, it seems to me, I've only recently started to look at the AM five and it seems, so I'm a EQ six R pro user and I got the HEQ5 but from a specification and price perspective it seems very competitive with the EQ6R Pro. I mean it has a fair amount of payload capacity yet the overall weight of the mount and the tripod is considerably less uh, and I think that the older I get <laughs> I think mm. especially as a traveler you know. Don't need wife, to take a counterweight with you. Yeah. yeah. My, my wife would not like to hear this, but there might be one in my future, you know. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm really impressed with it. Um, so I've, I've come the same journey. You know, I came from my first mount was an, an AVX and hated it with a vengeance. Um, I, changed onto a CGX, uh, built up some skills. Um, I moved over to Ioptrons. Uh, I've got two CM60s and a CM70. And um, the, the AM5, I think, is probably the easiest of them all, you know. Mm. Um, not just because of the, 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 the mount capabilities. I mean, it's... It's small, lightweight, you know, it's very powerful. Um, it's got a lot of torque, you know, you don't need to worry 100% about having absolutely perfect balance. I, that little thing, will, you know, I've got an FRA 500 on it, loaded up with all of the bits and pieces, filter wheels and my 2600 mono. And just a few nights ago, this thing is tracking it. 0.2 arc seconds you know it's wow. It, wow. it's 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 fabulous and um you know i i very rarely have issues with it. it it behaves pretty well um but when you integrate it with the asi air that is where the magic happens because um i it uh, i know i don't know if you've seen the hand controller on the um on the AM5, it looks like a game controller. It's a very, very different platform. Oh, yeah, it, no, I'm not familiar yeah, with Yeah, so it doesn't have, like, a, like the SynScan controller on the EQ6. It has a, a joystick, 
with a couple of buttons on there. You can turn the tracking on and off and you can make it go to the home position as a mechanical um, sensor to find home. And the rest of it is within the app. Um, so there is two parts to that. One is there is a standalone app, app for the AM5, which is basically replaces the hand controller. If you use the uh, ASI Air, you'll you'll find that using the app on the phone is so natural because it actually uses the same kind of interface. So uh, the, the interface is duplicated, really. Um, that has the Sky Atlas and all those um, lovely things on it as well. Um, you can change, of course, the AM5 from equatorial mode into Azel if you do solar imaging, for example. Mm. Um, so uh, you can just plunk this thing on the ground, take uh, two bolts out of the um, out of the mount, tip it on its side, and you press press and hold one button on the hand controller when you power on. You're in in Altaz mode. So um, you know you can you can use very very different modes, but when when you tag it with the ASI Air, you know polar alignment. You know, uh, so I don't know whether you guys know, but I've, polar alignment in the south here is a real pain. We don't have Polaris. Uh, we have a little a little star called Sigma Octantis, which is close to our pole, it's, and um, it's a big dark patch in the sky hmm. so polar alignment is is challenging in the south but using polar alignment on the asi air it's a breeze and that's why here nobody nobody here if you're an astrophotographer nobody has polar scopes because <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's a lesson in frustration so uh, I started off using, you know, uh, Pole Master and then Sharp Cap. I still use Sharp Cap. I really like Sharp Cap. Um, it has its has its uh, uses, uh, particularly in the observatory. Um, but if I'm using the ASI Air and the AM5, it's like, you know, plonk it on the ground. I kind of know where south is. You know, yeah, I've got some focus. Go to polar alignment. And away we go. You know, and it, it's five minutes and I'm done. It's easy. So yeah, yeah I, I don't use my pole master anymore. And, and I was really impressed with how easy it was to get a polar alignment done. Of course, we mm. have we have Polaris, but uh, how easy it was. And I liked the graphical user interface and the information that it uh, showed. Yeah, um, that was really, uh, really a positive. So one of the and, things that I get a lot as well is uh, oh you know how accurate is the asi air compared to pole master or the ioptron camera or um you know or sharp cap and i i can tell you they're all as accurate as each other because i've spent i spent weeks um swapping during testing swapping between sharp cap and the pole master and and the ah. you know doing you know um tests between them and am5 is uh, sorry the asi air is as um is as accurate as any of the others you know if you get a good night seeing you can be super duper stable and super accurate if you get a bad night seeing then it'll jump around as much as the others you know but you know i think we get slightly anal about you know polar alignment as well it's mm -hmm. it's yeah i like my observatory um, observatory uh, scopes are on fixed concrete piers, so they don't move. So it makes our life a lot easier. But um, I'm not polar aligning all the time on those. But the the portable stuff, yeah, it, yeah. I think people get a little bit too worried about how accurate they need to be. Um, so yeah, you can you can be a little less you know accurate and still get good good guiding, good tracking. So. Yeah, you know, I don't know what your thoughts are on this, but I came to the decision. Uh, I started using a three-point polar alignment in uh, Nina. It's a plug-in. And I felt that while my pole master uh, got me close, uh, it would seem to me to make sense to do it through the tube. 
uh, versus the, the camera fixed on the front of my mount. So I don't know if there's any benefit to doing it through the tube, but I, uh, I moved in that direction. And then with the, uh, you know, with the ASI air, um, it, it hmm. uh, you know, they, uh, most of these, most of these systems are checking the rotation anyway. They're not checking, uh, um, you know, so if you have the main tube and your guide camera is slightly off, it's not really a big deal because actually what, what, all these things are looking for is usually rotation. Okay. Um, right. So it's actually looking at the arc that the stars are actually, you know, the movement between here and here. Um, that's what they're usually looking at. But, um, you know, all of them, I mean, the ASI Air um, uses the main camera. Well, that's one of the tips, actually, because a lot of people, if they have a longer uh, focal length scope, they struggle with polar alignment and, and plate solving because the you know the field of view is potentially too small well you know you just swap the main camera for the guide camera and then polar align and plate solve and then swap them back you know so it's quite wow. easy to quite easy to do um and um that's one of the, the sort of tips that we give out same with wide fields you know if you get a camera lens you can go too wide there are too many stars and the stars are too small so um yeah just um just use the guide scope as the in that case you swap them back the other way so uh, so um good, but good, but the yeah. but the accur but the accuracy is just as just as good as the others. there's no okay. there's no issue with those so uh talking about tips and i think we're getting to the point where we're going to have to think about wrapping up this uh session anyway um if you had three to five things uh, or ideas to share with a beginner, um, what would they be? Oh, um, for astrophotography? Yes. Ah, yes. Uh, uh, okay. Um, well, read, 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 and more read, because research is, for me, I think, one of the key things that I get asked a lot. I get questions to the support line, that show me that that person has done very little or no research themselves. You've got to, you know, this is not a hobby where you can just, you know, I've seen it, you know, they go out and buy $20,000 worth of gear. They've got a Paramount mount and the Takahashi and full frame cameras, but have very, very little understanding of what they just bought, you know? Um, and that's a lesson in frustration because they get frustrated, they get upset, and then it leads to, you know, cloudy night and, you know, astromart sales of, you know, <laughs> unused, unused gear. Um, don't get greedy. That there, there is a, there is, I think there is a tendency for newcomers to yeah, almost eyes bigger than their bellies. You know, they're looking, you know, they go, you know, my advice is get a small refractor, you know, and learn how to use that. It is unforgiving in terms of polar alignment, in terms of guiding, you know, and um, you will be able to throw that in the car, move around, go to dark skies, go to star parties. And sure, it's a small refractor on a tiny mountain. Size isn't important. <laughs> it, it's, it's, you know, you you'll get a ton of value out of it and um you you won't get frustrated you'll learn a huge amount in a very small space of time and we shouldn't forget that actually going and capturing the data is only a tiny proportion of yeah. actually creating right. images yeah. once we get once you get through that 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 hill then there's now what the hell do i do with all this data i've got to process this all and then you're into a whole new ball game as well, you know. Um, read, read the product websites. Uh, go look at the detail. Talk to people before you buy anything. And um, yeah, don't don't let your wallet, uh, you know, um, rule your head because um, it's a steep and slippery slope. You, need, you don't need everything. You know, you, you, I, you could set up on day one with a camera lens and a, you could buy a star tracker. Um, even just 
you know, I've got a couple of guides that I give out at star parties and our events, which is basically how to take images of the night sky just using the family DSLR, you know, or mirrorless camera. You don't need to get all of that stuff to get started. I mean, I started with the DSLR and a kit lens and then sort of worked from there. Um, if you're, I open, think there's a, oh, if you're I, open I just think, sh sharing those, uh, Docs. Yeah, I, sure. I yeah. can put links yep. in this uh, video so people can find them. I think they'd yeah. be very helpful. Um, but yeah, and and I, I really be careful who you get advice from. There are a lot of people that have yes. uh, old wives' tales, strange ideas about you know concepts, um, and as a beginner. Follow the basic steps. You know, if you're brand new to astro imaging, use cal use calibration files. Do all of the steps like you were driving a new car. You know, for the first time. You know, um, when you know how to cut corners later on, then you don't get the results you're expecting. You go, oh, I know why. But on day on day one, you know, follow every single step that you think you know you should and um get the right advice and yeah yeah don't let your wallet rule your heart yeah. <laughs> yeah. and and more importantly it's a hobby to have fun with don't, don't get too serious you know um go out have fun and um don't don't expect um don't expect magazine quality images you know in a few weeks months maybe in a couple of years, but uh, it's not a hobby for instant gratification. You know, you're not going to buy all this gear, press a button and it's going to pop out an A-pod tomorrow. You know, it just, mm -hmm. it just doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah. That um, we just did a chat with uh, a John Angstrom and he put together a presentation of his like progression of his first uh images which were just a dslr on a, on a tripod you know and he was mm. showing and sharing that you know what i liked he said uh, astrophotography is not a competition it's a personal pursuit and um and you know and how over a period of time as he started to gain more knowledge and experience then he started to think about okay where can i make a couple of improvements uh, and again uh, what i really liked and i've not really been successful in sharing on my channel are the more modest uh, kits or, or, or gear setups out there that people are using to produce some tremendous images, you know, and, um, you know, all the time I read about budget, you know, uh, someone on cloudy nights, well, they, they have a small budget. Well, that's okay. You can make it work, you know, and then later on, if you get bit by the bug, you can think about maybe making some changes down the road but and the other thing on that processing side <laughs> yeah data collection is one thing that whole world of processing do you have a particular tool or tools that you use on processing oh i'm a i'm a pix insight guy and okay. um i you know i've been through a number of them i find most of them horribly frustrating because uh, i mean pix is absolutely an amazing tool um, I have used Astro Pixel Processor as well. All of them leave me, yeah, as a software development guy who, who, you know, I love building user interfaces that that work, you know. And people say to me, oh, where's the manual for the ASS Air? And I say, you don't need a manual. No, you don't. This thing is, if you need a manual, we've done something wrong. You know, it should be relatively intuitive. You don't get a manual for every time you buy an app on your phone, you know. Um, but um, most of these leave me flat in terms of user interface. And Pix, Pix has to be one of the bizarrest interfaces ever. But in terms of power, um, yeah, they're, they're impressive. But Again, if you are a newcomer, they are daunting. And yeah. there are plenty of free tools and plenty of low-cost tools that are more kind of, you know, collect the data here and push the button and then I get something out of the other end. But, um, yeah, none of these tools are, you know, you've got to have some kind of knowledge, or, you know, 
even even deep sky stack it yeah you've got to understand what debayering means because you know, i get loads of times people go oh, i'm using deep sky stacker and i've got a 294 mc and i've got monochrome images my camera must be faulty I need a replacement. <laughs> if I... No, no, it's okay. I show well, you where it is. Well, I even got I, it. I even got it snapshotted now, so I can just <laughs> send people the picture. I, I think that might be a, a follow-on uh, session or something. So, uh, as we're calling, uh, coming to the close here, I think we got about four minutes left. Uh, uh, Patrick, any last, uh, any questions or anything? Oh, just, uh... man, I, I've got tons of questions, but I didn't want to interrupt anybody. Oh, well, just just <laughs> jump real in quick, from though, now on. Real but, quick, you have to, you have okay. to, because I'll just talk yeah. for the AM for the AM five. All of us that have the EQ six R. So if we have the tripod from the EQ six, how do you adapt the AM five? Is there an adapter, or does it just fit straight on? Okay, yep. so oh, it's like, like a little pier. extension. Oh, okay, yeah. This is Perfect. the uh, PE two hundred, and <clears throat> it's new. Here's the adapter for the Skywatcher mount. You change the AM5 uh, tripod plate to the Skywatcher one. You can now put your AM5 on the EQ6R tripod. Uh -huh. You can now put it on an Ioptron tripod, and you can put it on a Celestron tripod. Nice. And those are available now? Yep. They're for order on the website. In fact, Perfect. I just did a, re um, a review and an installation guide on a video I put up last night. So... If okay, you go to and, YouTube and look for ZWOPE200, you'll find it. Okay, okay. and if you shoot Perfect. me the link to your channel or uh, the name uh, along yep. with the documents you're willing to share, I'll see that it gets in here. Other than yep. that, I think we're going to have to try and beat the clock here. So I want to say, Simon, this is a fantastic uh, education yes. for me, and uh, I really <laughs> appreciate uh, you sharing the knowledge uh, with us. And um, other than that, I think uh, if uh, people keep an, uh, an eye out and continue to uh, consider joining a future chat and we can continue to have these conversations and, uh, and do more knowledge share, in particular focused towards uh, people that might be in the beginning part of their journey. So, More than happy to come back and help you guys out. So oh yeah, good. definitely. Pre appreciate it. And the information on the, uh, on the air platform and the AM5 was fantastic. So I really appreciate <laughs> yes. that. It this. helps when you live it day in, day out yeah, for I years. Guess it does. <laughs> All right. Well, um, in closing, uh, wherever you may be in the world, uh, clear skies. Other than that, I think, gentlemen, we just say till next time. Yep. We'll see you next time. See you next Thanks time. Thanks for the invite. See you, everybody. Thank you.